episode 157. This is a weekly diary podcast hosted by me, Ray Taylor. And this week, I'm thankful for something that may not be around for much longer, something that has been on attack for uh, some time now. And uh, I think a lot of people are expecting it to be gone, but I'm hopeful that it'll stick around because it's something that I've surprisingly enjoyed using, got a lot of benefit out of. That's why I am thankful for. But this week, I am thankful for TikTok, Um, something that I never thought I would say. I never thought I would get into TikTok, which I think most people have that prejudice opinion of TikTok until they get into it. They have some kind of preconceived notion of what it is. And then you start using it, and then you realize that it like, oh, it like, unlike any other social media that like serves you garbage constantly it actually serves me things that i'm 100 percent interested in first off it gives me something that used to happen on twitter all the time is a first person perspective on news like when things are happening like when the george floyd protest took over and you could see what the protests were like and see what's happening in different cities different cities around the the world in protest of George Floyd and Black Lives Matter. Seeing what's happening in France, seeing what happened recently in Tennessee this past week, seeing what's happening in all these different red states and how fascism is really kind of taking hold. So getting a first person new and first person perspective and like accurate accounts of things that are happening that you don't see that take days or weeks or even never show up on mainstream news which i haven't watched it's insane it's so hilarious all the conservatives that like assume i watch cable news on some like maybe because they watch fox news they assume that's how people still get their news or because that's what the fox news people like use as some kind of insult that like they're the people that don't believe their bullshit do so because they watch cnn or whatever it's like i have never watched cable news in my entire life i I haven't had cable since 2007 right it's 2023 right i've been getting my news from online sources for the majority of my life and now i'm getting it through first-hand accounts of what's going on so you want to say what i'm seeing and what i'm talking about is bullshit then you are probably the one that has some kind of propaganda filter on whatever it is news network you're watching. But I always find it hilarious. Like (laughs) I've never watched, I'm 40, I'm 43 years old this year. I've never watched cable news networks. Never. It's garbage. And when I see like my roommate watching stuff, it's so obviously overproduced and over dramatized to push whatever narrative they are even if i agree with the overall premise of their story it is clearly manipulative in so many other ways as news broadcasts have become but back to tiktok back why i'm thankful for tiktok it allows people to organize for political purposes which is something twitter used to be used for and now obviously is controlled by somebody who is on the side of fascism you have People organizing for protests, people organizing for unions, people organizing to expose fascist laws and politicians that are being put in place and injustices that are happening around this country or around the world, right? There's tons of information and education about things that I'm super interested in, whether it's AI, which is something very new that I'm very interested in, and understanding the best ways I can use AI to help with my art career, to help with my podcasting career, to help with my my small business, right? The tool that is AI and f- understanding the best ways to use that. There's so many videos of people who have like so like my bookmark section on my Twitter account, my TikTok account is flooded with information. Stuff for Photoshop, stuff for business, stuff for art. All of these things are so, like, things that I would never get from any other social media service. Because all that you see on those other services are people selling stuff, right? 
sign up for my AI training seminar, sign up for my Photoshop tips and tricks mailing list. Like it's all like not just free information. It's all like, and most of the stuff when people are selling stuff, they don't really know. At, at least my experience seeing people like selling people on the idea of it being difficult to start a podcast is the most insane thing I've ever heard. I've been podcasting since way before there were like thousands of tools available. Like you can literally buy a podcasting kit and there are apps on phones that allow you to set up a podcast in minutes. Like the the ease at which it, you can a person can set up a podcast is ridiculous considering how easy it was back when I started in 2007, 2008 where there weren't any of these tools. But it was still, I started podcasting because it was easy to do and I wanted to see if I could do it. And I could and I did. And I've been doing it since then. Countless podcasts, thousands of podcast episodes. So when I see people in 2023 talk about how hard it is, how like you need to take some training thing or you need to buy their their training thing or you need to like sign up for some like complicated thing on how to be a podcast. Like that's the most bullshit. And you see most of that stuff on other websites you don't see that stuff on tiktok i don't see that stuff that's not what i'm interested in. i'm not interested in being sold bullshit from small businesses that most of them don't know like these guru people that want to teach you how to do the thing become rich super easy invest in the crypto super easy become a millionaire overnight like it's all bullshit the oh, social media guru you go to their site they're their social media page and they have like less followers than you it is like garbage these people also tons of mental health stuff that a lot of people have seen to help diagnose the, th the issues they have to hear stories about people who have the same issues as them to find ways to help cope to find ways to get help with their issues like there's so much of these like valuable tools that come with a service like TikTok that that their algorithm is so good at pinpointing and understanding what each user is into and feeding them content that's valuable to them in a way that's organic and not fake and not somebody trying to make a buck off of them, right? Self-care, also like funny videos, you know, it like it, it's not just certain things, like it is a plethora of things and in kind of a ratio that I kind of enjoy. And if a big story pops up, you can't help but see all these different independent reports on it, independent first person views on what's actually happening. Way before, way before, like everything else is on a delay. That's why it's hilarious. So many uh, conservative people, they always, there's always like a one or two day delay on when they respond to shit. Because they have to see what their propaganda networks say about a thing, where they finally hear about a thing, and they see when they so they can regurgitate. And it's always a day or two. You never see them pop off when tr actual tragic things happen. Actual things happen. Like next week, there will be tons of conservative people online talking about why what happened in Tennessee was good, actually. Like, guaranteed, there is nothing. I have seen nothing as far as that. Although next week, now that they had time to watch their Fox News or their whatever podcast, right-wing podcast, to hear whatever right-wing talk points they can to justify why three Democratic politicians were made to be expelled, that were elected because they, they stood up to exercise their First Amendment right to protest and out of those three, how the two black dudes were the ones who were expelled. Meanwhile, they've had people in that in that uh, Senate that were being investigated for like sex crimes, people that were being investigated and charged with like corruption and fraud and embezzlement, like people that actually have done legitimate crimes have sat there with no kind of punishment but because these people, aren't part of the Republican majority of the House in Tennessee 
they were expelled because that's the kind of fascist government that's taking over. And that's the thing that even took it, it took every single news organization a day, two days before they even started commenting on it. Um, it's also a great resource to like research stuff. Like when you type things in, I mentioned this last week, you type in France to TikTok and you get a bunch of bullshit posts that have nothing to do with what's actually going on in France. You type in France in TikTok and you see everything that's going on in France. Using the search in TikTok to do research on a topic is the most useless thing. Like that search bar in TikTok is the most useless feature of TikTok or t of Instagram. The search bar on Instagram is the most useless feature on Instagram. It does not do any kind of search for anything. It is garbage. And then you do a basic search on TikTok and it's you find so much an abundance of what you're looking for. In a way that even using Google doesn't give you. Google so often it gives you like all kinds of these bullshit websites where you click on it and there's 20 pop-up ads and it's like you got to scroll through like this entire article to search for like some answer that may or may not even be available on that article. And it changed my perspective on many things and clarified my stance on many issues. It made me understand how bullshit a lot of people are that call themselves... Uh, centrists or moderates it's just like it's just people that mostly are conservative but have a few liberal ideals but like the fact that they vote conservative the fact that they i mean i don't even i think the majority of democrat po politicians in the in the democrat party are far too conservative for what i'm looking for so for somebody to call themselves like the center is the center is far right as far as I'm concerned. Like, congratulations that maybe you have a gay uncle and you think that there should be some, you know, some, you know, human rights for people who have same-sex relationships or whatever. But, like, if you're still voting Republicans, then you're still voting against the, the, the demonization of, like, all kinds of marginalized groups you're like you're like voting for people who support some of the most evil bullshit that's going on in the world so it's also made me clarify opinions on things that before was very wishy-washy like i you know i didn't understand like it's it's educated me more unlike any other social media platform and it's not like education through memes like so many people do on like the Facebook and Twitter accounts that are like bullshit. It's like, it's just, they're just propaganda cartoons. And that's like their identity. It's so sad to see people's identity be propaganda cartoons, right? And they're passionately angry in agreement with their propaganda cartoons. It is just like mind blowing. Like that's your, that's who you are. That's your identity. That's your personality, right? It's just as sad as when you go to somebody and it's just they're they're like obsessed with, you know, some childhood cartoon thing. It's like, OK, maybe I, I kind of feel bad for you. Like you haven't been able to like get into anything else. That's like it. That's the thing you're obsessed with. I don't know. At least childhood cartoons aren't like leading to fascism. But anyway. That's what I'm thankful for, TikTok, for as long as it's around. I hope it sticks around. Um, and I'm, it, it is kind of sad that if it does stick around, then it might just end up turning into what everything else has turned into, which is just garbage. Because it's the only social media platform that I actually use. I don't use... I post on them. I post all my artwork and clips from this podcast on all social media platforms, right? Because they're free to post even though now most of those things especially with meta you have to pay for people to see your posts so it's like i don't even know i, I probably just shut that down because i'm not gonna pay meta meta can suck my dick i'm not gonna pay meta to to show my stuff on social media that was like the the 
the like ridiculous conspiracy that went around back in the MySpace days that Tom was going to charge you to use MySpace. Well, now that's what these people are doing. These people that sell your identity, sell your information, Facebook and Instagram, right? They've been doing it far longer, Twitter, far longer than TikTok was even around. So to think that like TikTok is this, this, the one and only thing that's selling, like all of your data has been sold from all of these other, you know, companies already. To think that like, anyway, I don't know. I, I lost track of what I was saying. My brain is done. My voice is done. But in addition to all of that, I am very thankful for all of you. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to connect with you through this podcast and for the chance to share my journey with you as long as I'm able to. Uh, please join the conversation by leaving a comment on your favorite podcast platform or over on youtube.com slash inspired disorder if you are watching these episodes as you can every episode. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next Saturday for another episode of Raise Days. I don't feel like screaming because my voice Raise Days. New episodes of the Ray Taylor Show come out every single day. Subscribe on YouTube and everywhere our podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Buy Ray Taylor Show merch over at inspireddisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace. Out! Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can bring to reality.